In this video, we're going to look at two of the four different elasticities that you need to know about. So that's going to be income and cross elasticities of demand. So income elasticity of demand first, and this measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded for a product to changes in income. And so when people's income changes, you'd expect the demand for the goods that they're consuming to change as well. Um, but this impact is going to be different depending on the type of product it is. And so most goods we call normal goods and they're goods for which people's income goes up and that increases their demand for those goods because you'd expect that to happen for most goods. But that can happen to different degrees. And so there are two different types of normal goods. So the first we call luxury goods. And these are goods for which the change in demand is going to be greater in proportion to the change in income. We might also refer to those as being income elastic. So, for example, if your income increases, then people will generally demand a lot more of goods like holidays because they're goods that people really want and they really desire to have. And so the more income they have, the more they can afford those goods. And so the demand is going to change quite significantly for those types of goods. But there's also going to be these goods where incomes rise and demand is going to increase, but it's going to be smaller in proportion to the change in income. And so, for example, fruit and vegetables, you wouldn't find people's income going up and then going out and buying hundreds and hundreds more tomatoes and cabbages and fresh fruit and veg. But overall, over the population, you'd probably find if income increases that people will consume a little bit more of those goods. Um, and so we could also refer to those as income inelastic goods. And finally, you've got your inferior goods, and those are the ones where income goes up and the amount that consumers are going to buy are going to decrease in response to the increase in income. So, for example, bus travel, um, people's income goes up, they're probably more likely to want to maybe travel by taxi, maybe more likely to be able to afford to run a car instead. And so the demand for those sorts of goods are going to go down. Now, the formula for calculating income elasticity of demand, we take the percentage change in quantity demanded and divide it by the percentage change in income. And then the coefficient that we work out from this, we can use to interpret what type of good that we're looking at. So normal goods have a positive income elasticity of demand. And you can think that's quite logical because... Um, for normal goods, we're talking about goods for which an increase in income leads to an increase in quantity demanded or a decrease in income leads to a decrease in quantity demanded. So if we're doing a positive divided by a positive or a negative divided by a negative, um, then that's either way, that's going to give us a positive coefficient. So that's going to be our normal goods. But then we can further differentiate between our normal luxury goods and our normal necessities. So the luxury goods, the coefficient is going to be greater than positive one. And again, the reason for that is because the luxury goods are the ones where this impact on quantity demand is going to be greater than proportional. So if this figure here up top is greater than this figure here that you're dividing it by, then that's going to give you um, a value greater than one. Um, whereas if the percentage change in quantity demanded is um, less than the, the percentage change in income, then that's going to give us a value of between naught and positive one. And so that would show us our necessity goods. Now, the inferior goods are going to have a negative income elasticity of demand. And that's because uh, the relationship is going to be inverse. So um, an increase in income is going to lead to a decrease in demand or a decrease in income is going to lead to an increase in demand. And if you were to do the negative divided by positive or positive divided by negative, then that will give you a negative income elasticity of demand coefficient and show you an inferior good. Um, just to take you through a quick example of that, imagine you've got um, a change in impact incomes impacting on the quantity of baked beans demanded. So in this case, incomes are going up from £25,000 up to £30,000. Um, so the first thing we need to do is work out the percentage change that's going on there. And so our percentage change is the, the difference divided by what it's changed from times 100. So in this case, 20%. Um, and 
Uh, we then need to uh, do our income elasticity of demand formula, which is going to be the percentage change in quantity demanded, which is here, 5%, divided by the percentage change in income, which we've just worked out at 20%, and that gives us positive 0.25. So the fact that it's positive shows us that it's a normal good, and the fact that it's between 0 and 1 shows us that it's a necessity. So we can say that's a normal necessity good, or the demand for that good is income inelastic. So moving on now then to cross elasticity of demand, and this measures the responsiveness of quantity demand for one product to changes in the price of another separate product. So rather than this time looking at the impact of a change in income on quantity demanded, we're looking at the impact of a change in the price of a different product. And you can use that to categorise your products as to whether they're complements or substitutes. And so for complements, you get an increase in the price of one of the products and that's going to lead to a decrease in the quantity that's demanded for the other product. So if we had an increase in the price of cinema tickets, then we would find that fewer people are going to go to the cinema because of the law of demand and therefore fewer people are going to be buying popcorn. And so that's therefore going to decrease the demand for popcorn. Whereas with substitutes, you get an increase in the price of the one product and that leads to an increase in demand for the other product. So if you had an increase in the price of uh, bus tickets and bus journeys, then that's going to mean that more people are going to travel by taxi instead. And so that would um, increase the demand for that other substitute good. So the formula for calculating cross elasticity of demand um, is similar actually to the price elasticity of demand formula in that you're doing the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. But with cross elasticity of demand, it's for two different products. So call them product A, product B, product X, product Y, whatever you want to call them. But the change in price is for a different product to the change in quantity demanded. Um, and you can then use that to interpret whether you're looking at uh, your complementary goods or your substitute goods. So the complements are going to have a negative cross elasticity of demand. And that's because these two things are going to be moving in two different directions. So if the price of your cinema tickets goes up, then the quantity demanded of the popcorn is going to go down and the same vice versa. And you can also look to see how strong that relationship is. So strong complements, um, the cross elasticity of demand is going to be less than negative one. So negative 1.5, negative two, negative three, etc. cetera. Um, and that is because the percentage change in quantity demand is going to be quite significant compared to the percentage change in price for products which are really, really strongly complementary. Whereas for weak complements, this percentage change in quantity demand is going to be relatively small in comparison to the percentage change in price. And substitute goods are going to have a positive cross elasticity of demand. Um, and exactly the same rules apply just in reverse as for the complementary goods. And um, so it's positive because um, these uh, changes are going to move in the same direction. So if we increase the price of bus tickets, then that's going to increase the quantity demanded of um, taxis. And um, if it's more than one, then uh, the, the ch percentage change in quantity demand is going to be quite significant compared to the percentage change in price. And between 0 and 1, the percentage change in quantity demand is going to be relatively small compared to the percentage change in price. And so that can show us how strong that relationship is. Um, a value of 0, by the way, would show us that there's no relationship at all between those two products. And so just like we've done with all the others, um, a quick look at an example. So imagine you've got uh, the price of petrol and its impact on the quantity of cars being demanded. And so with the example we've got here, the price of petrol going up by 5p from £1 and the quantity demand of cars going down from 200 cars in this particular market to 198 cars. Um, and so that drop um, of two cars from 200 is clearly a 1% fall in the quantity demanded. Uh, the increase in price is a 5% increase. Okay, so increase of 5p from one pound, that's a 5% increase. And so again, we can just punch it into our formula. So um, we'd be doing the, the minus 1% 
um, the the fall in quantity demanded divided by the 5% increase in price and that would give us a figure of negative 0.2 so the fact that it's negative shows us that we're dealing with complements and the fact that it's 0.2 between 0 and 1 which are a relatively weak relationship so we could call them weak complements now we said with price elasticity of demand, they would be really useful to a business when they're thinking about setting their prices because they can look at the impact of price changes on their total revenue. Uh, but it'll be a little bit different with uh, income and cross elasticity of demand because we're dealing with situations where the business doesn't actually really have any control over changes in people's income or no control over changes in, for example, substitute products. Um, but it is still gonna be useful. So with income elasticity of demand, uh, they can help businesses plan and estimate their likely future demand based on what's going on in the economy and what people's incomes are doing. So if people's incomes are rising quite rapidly and you're a business that sells a lot of luxury goods, then you can um, sort of sensibly predict that the demand for your luxury goods is going to rise quite rapidly. If you're selling a range of different goods, then you could have a look at your product range and maybe think about focusing more on the luxury goods rather than the inferior goods because you know that the demand is going to be stronger for those types of goods. With cross elasticity of demand, it's about looking at changes in prices of other products and how that's going to impact on the demand for your goods so if for example a competitor good a substitute good to yours that was quite a strong substitute was to be cutting their prices then you might need to think about how's that going to impact on your demand you'd expect that to have a have an effect of decreasing the demand for your goods so you might need to think about cutting your prices as well in response to that